Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's panel discussion. I'm Duncan Short, Director of Global Implementation Science at Vive Healthcare. Vive is the only pharmaceutical company 100% dedicated to HIV and implementation science focuses upon how we can accelerate the adoption of evidence-based interventions into real world practice to improve patient outcomes. So essentially, how do we get things that work to people who need it in different situations and contexts? So today we're going to be talking about the findings of the PROGRESS study, which concentrated upon the use of questionnaires and measures completed by individuals before they see their HIV doctor for a review appointment. And these are called patient reported outcome measures or PROs, and we'll explain more about that shortly. But to discuss the study and what we found and the resources that we're making available, I'm joined by three members of the Progress Study Steering Committee. I'm delighted to be with Dr. Heidi Crane from the University of Washington in Seattle, Jean Bacon, Executive Director of the Ontario HIV Treatment Network in Toronto, and Jeff Berry, Director of Publications at TPAN and editor of Positively Aware magazine. Welcome, everybody. Um, Heidi, if I can turn to yourself first as co-principal investigator of the PROGRESS study. Before we discuss the study results, um, for those less familiar, can you um, tell us what PROs are and give us some examples of how they can be used in HIV care? Sure. So first, let me say it's a pleasure to be here, at least via Zoom, having this discussion. Patient reported outcomes or PROs are measures of a patient's health status that come directly from the patient. So this is not from the labs or the physical exam, but from the patient and what they say themselves. Examples of PRO measures that can be useful in clinical care include instruments that measure symptoms such as depression or anxiety. They can measure health behaviors such as medication adherence, risk behaviors such as substance use, as well as other important social determinants of health or practical or safety information such as measures of intimate partner violence. Our aim was to provide insights that could help regular clinics to implement PROs in their own settings. And we studied the introduction in two different, two very different um, outpatient HIV clinics, uh, Midway Specialty Care Clinic in Fort Pierce in Florida, in the United States, and St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto in Canada. Um, and there were two things that we really wanted to understand. First, we wanted to understand what is the added value of implementing PROs in routine care for patients, doctors, clinic staff. And then secondly, what are the implementation learns that we can take from this implementation activity? What needs to happen? What are the core elements that can ensure the successful integration of PROs into routine care? So if we start with the benefits um, for the doctors, for the clinical team, Heidi, can you give us some insights into what the progress study found from a doctor's perspective? Consistently across the clinics, providers agreed that, that the PROs helped prioritize discussion topics with the patients, that the PROs identified topics that would not have otherwise been addressed, that the PROs led to more discussions on potentially sensitive topics, making the consultation or the visit overall e easier. And more specifically, I think, for example, awareness of issues such as anxiety and suicidal ideation increased, and providers were much more likely to refer patients, for example, with anxiety symptoms for mental health care after they began receiving the PRO feedback. And I think these examples really highlight one of the biggest benefits um, for the from the provider viewpoint of implementing PROs compared to usual care, specifically that they identified hidden patient needs or sensitive issues that would have been missed with the um, providers particularly noting that this was a benefit for the domains of depression, suicidality, sexual risk behavior, and intimate partner violence. So it's both identifying more issues and it's also leading to additional provider actions uh, to support improved patient care. Um, Jeff, um, what we've learned um, from progress is that these questionnaires and scales before their appointment can really enhance what the doctor understands about a patient's needs and a patient's situation. Um, what have we learned from patients about why this can make such a difference in that information exchange? Yeah, you know, thanks, Duncan. Um, so, I mean, it really um, it really improves uh, provider and patient communication. I think, um, and just the volume of information in the you know around nine minutes on an average that a PRO uh, takes to fill out um, is just invaluable. I think to um, to the to the provider, and you know, as Heidi mentioned, it you know really can uh, catch information you know around mental health issues and substance use and adherence that. 
wouldn't uh, otherwise have been caught. I can't tell you how many times in my own personal experience that I've either you know filled out a list for my doctor that I forgot to bring with me or that I had in my pocket during the whole time, um, only you know wishing later that you know I had brought those issues to the forefront in the, in the clinic appointment when when they're often rushed. And so I think you know that's um, is just you know another way to enhance that communication. As Jeff mentioned earlier, patients sometimes have a hard time telling us about that. Maybe they fear we'll be disappointed or it's easier to tell the tablet. Um, a recent example in my patient panel is a patient I think I've known for probably a decade who'd had a history of, of methamphetamine use, but not for many years. Last year, he started using methamphetamines again and hadn't been comfortable telling me about it yet. And the PROs identified both the meth use as well as some um, new risky sexual some new sexual risk behaviors as well as he was once again smoking cigarettes and this provided me the opportunity to help him get the support he needed related to the crystal methamphetamine use i really liked how one of the providers that we interviewed as part of the study described it as allowing them to look behind a curtain mm -hmm. and i think for me that really encapsulates it very um, very clearly um, how they could see more understand the patient more and therefore treat the patient more effectively Jean, if I can come to you now, St. So Michael's Hospital in Toronto was one of our two sites uh, in the study, and they're part of the clinic network that you lead, uh, the Ontario HIV Treatment Network. How quickly did you start to see the benefits of PROs at St. Michael's? Well, I think the providers told us that within the first two or three days, they already saw the benefit because they had two to three patients who identified issues with suicidal ideation that they hadn't been aware of. And although this was just the testing period of the study and the clinicians were not actually getting the information right away, they were able to act on this. The agreement was that if anything like that came up, they would act on it right away. So immediately they were able to intervene in something that they probably would not have asked the patient about if they had been there. I think one of the barriers, though, that might make some sites reluctant or some clinics reluctant to take this on is that it's perceived as very difficult to implement. You know, where do they start? You know, what are the first steps to um, to implement this and, and, you know, what does the process look like from start to finish? Um, Jean, before this project, I know you were very aware of the benefits of PROs and you wanted to implement it. How difficult a step is that to move from wanting PROs, but actually then transitioning to make it happen? Well, I think you have to persuade people that it's going to be better for the clinicians and for the patients both at the same time, right? And, and, that was really useful, having the experience from Heidi's team of what they've been able to do and show. Um, you have to recognize that there are going to be hurdles. You have to deal with the IT department and with privacy, and they're often very hesitant about change or doing anything differently. Um, you also, I think, need those local champions, people on the ground who are really keen and excited, because there will be some resistance from people who just don't want to shift their practice. But if they can see their peers doing it and get benefiting from it, then it gradually spreads through the whole clinic. At least that's been my experience, Heidi. I'm not sure if that's what you saw at other sites. You, you summed it up perfectly. I think that comes back to the heart of what the progress study was about, because it was an implementation science study design. So that means that we weren't just looking at whether this worked. We were looking at um, why it worked in our sites. You know, what were the barriers and the facilitators to successful adoption? What were the strategies and the plans that we put into place uh, to support that integration into routine care and how successful were they? And I think um, one of the advantages for sites following us is that we've compiled all of these learns and lessons and processes within the implementation toolkit for the study um, and, and we're sharing that as a fundamental objective or a fundamental output of the of the study so it's a lot less challenging for sites following uh, following afterwards if I can now just, just look ahead at the future of PROs I guess um, you know I'm very proud of, of what progress has done to advance the understanding of PROs and to share our, our insights to to clinics who may choose to follow um, but they aren't routine it's not common practice to have a comprehensive assessment like this um, uh, in a clinic in this way. So thinking ahead, um, Jean, how do you see, or, or do you see more clinics taking these learns and adopting PROs in the future? Ultimately, we hope to have it across the 21 clinics in our network. Um, so yeah, we're, we just think it's a, an incredible tool and we're really looking forward to uh, to seeing it in action everywhere. I would just say, you know, put yourselves um, in the shoes of a person living with HIV and, you know, would you want this to be part of your care um, 
you know, it, it could, I think, you know, the, the keys really is what is striking that balance between what Heidi and Jean have talked about in terms of not interrupting patient flow or clinic flow, but also understanding the real benefits that this can provide a patient. And, you know, to the point where, hey, if I know my, my friend's going to his clinic and they have an iPad, then, you know, how come I'm not getting that at my clinic? And maybe I'll, I'll be, you know, asking my doctor, like, where's my iPad? I want to, I want to fill out this, you know, form before I, I get in to see you. So, um, you know, I think the, the benefits, um, there's benefits on both sides, definitely. I think with HIV medicines getting more and more effective, there's a real drive towards um, looking beyond clinical markers, such as viral suppression and considering the overall quality of life as a patient. Um, I think the challenge is how can we do that effectively? And I think PROs have a huge role in this because of how it can help patients to share their health, their needs, their situation, their preferences, um, including topics and areas that are difficult to uh, to raise and to talk about. Um, and I think, obviously, with the current global COVID pandemic as well, even more appointments now are being conducted online and the opportunities for face-to-face -face appointments are getting less and less. So does the movement towards telehealth and telemedicine present another difficulty for doctors to truly understand uh, what is best for individuals? I think, you know, telehealth is here to stay. I think in many respects, um, what, one of the things we've learned from COVID is um, it, for some people, it's actually, um, it improves their, you know, making and, and keeping appointments. Jean, I know you have a similar vision as well in Ontario um, for PROs. Yeah, the, uh, the primary care clinic that's going to be uh, implementing in the next two months is very keen to do all the PROs um, this way because people can complete them before they come to the clinic. So it actually starts to eliminate any problems with clinic flow. Those questions are asked and answered and the, and the information is with the clinician as soon as they get there, as soon as they pick up the phone. And I, I mean, I find it interesting. I think COVID, is, COVID has actually created opportunities in terms of people being able to will, be willing to look at different ways of delivering care. And I actually think it'll make our clinics more receptive to pros because they're now more open to doing things in different ways. Heidi, Jean, Jeff, thank you for taking the time today and for your invaluable contribution during the progress study over the last two years. It's been a pleasure working with you all. Um, as a reminder to people viewing this panel discussion, if you want more information, the progress study website is available. It has details of the study itself and we'll keep adding more and more information as we publish manuscripts and conference abstracts uh, going forward. Uh, it also hosts the implementation toolkit on the site that provides information for sites considering implementing PROs into routine care. And we also have an evidence review and summary document on the site that gives an overview of studies that have looked at the effectiveness of PROs in routine care. And that's not just HIV studies, that's, that's studies from other disease areas such as oncology. Um, so thank you for joining the discussion. I hope you find the website and the resources useful. Please do let us know. And thank you very much.